All right, another fish on the deeper. My name's Steve Moore. I'm the field editor of Southern Kayak Fishing Magazine. And the folks at Deeper Sonar gave me their Deeper Pro Plus model to evaluate. Uh, they gave it to me for free, but they're not sponsoring this video. <laughs> they're taking a risk on whether I like this thing or not. So I've been using this thing pretty regularly for the last month or so. And this video is gonna capture the results of my evaluation. Stay tuned and see how it compares to my Helix 7 that costs a heck of a lot more. So it's pretty neat how you attach this in the boat mode to your kayak. You have the choice of this clamp that they provide with the flexible arm that looks like it fits just perfectly onto a Scotty mount. Alternatively, it comes with a lug that slides into your utility track and you can just screw it right down to the utility track as I've done. They provide a strap that you can attach to the deeper to make sure that you don't lose it if it ever comes loose from the end of the flexible arm. Now to use this, it's just a matter of bending this down into the water and turning on the app and I should be good to go. Now when you're running the deeper on the side, you got to kind of paddle gently so your boat doesn't rock too much and cause the deeper to come up out of the water. If it's out of the water for too long, it's going to disconnect. 100% better than the Piranha Max that I was using that you can see in this clip right here. And it only gets worse as the waves increase or as my speed increases. You can't paddle with that in the holder. Yep, <laughs> just a little bit of a difference in vibration. This thing is smooth. Well, I'm doing a test today of the deeper. I've got my Humminbird Helix 7 active, and I've got the deeper right now in boat mode. And what I want to do is compare the readings that I'm getting out of the deeper to the Helix. And right now they're tracking pretty good. Uh, Humminbird says the water temperature is 80.1, I'm sorry, 80.5. Deeper says it's 82, so that's close enough for government work. Uh, showing 7.9 feet, and this is showing 8.3. So it could be the variation in where the uh, transducer is versus the deeper, but that's all pretty, pretty slick. So what do you really need when you're kayak fishing inshore? Here's my Helix 7 from Hummingbird, and it's got the heavy battery, the control head, the transducer, and I had to pay extra for the ram mounts to be able to mount it to a utility track on my kayak. So look at all that versus the simplicity of the deeper. It's basically just this rod to attach it to a utility track and then the deeper unit itself that only weighs three ounces. Let's see what the weight difference is between these two rigs. 10 and a half pounds for all this stuff. And it only goes up from there if you use a heavier, more capable battery than what I've got right here, which is good for about seven hours of fishing on the Helix 7. And we know the deeper only weighs three ounces. Quite a difference. Let's discuss the display settings and the frequency choices on the deeper. Let me show you what the classic looks like. You can see the classic scrolling on that side and it's very dark and hard to see. And this is a cloudy day without a lot of bright sun. If I switch that to the daytime mode by using the screen color mode selection, you can see that it's bright white and purple, and that's much easier to see uh, for daytime fishing. So I would recommend the first thing you do when you get your deeper and you connect the app is get out of that classic mode and into daytime mode. One other thing to be aware of is how you hold your smartphone. If you hold it sideways like this, the picture is going to be compressed to the this dimension of your smartphone. If you hold your phone like this, the picture goes up and down and you'll see it a lot easier especially the narrow band between the surface of the water and the bottom. 
if you hold them like this. Because you don't really care about the history. What you want to know is what the deeper is picking up right now. And by you holding the smartphone vertically, you can see that a lot easier. So I'm sitting here in the boat. The deeper readout says it's too shallow or too deep. This is supposed to be good for two feet. And I can get this much of my paddle down into the water, which is probably about four feet or so. Now let's talk about the frequency setting. Right now on the 290 hertz frequency, my deeper is behaving just fine and it's reading 2.8 feet of depth. If I were to switch it to the 90 frequency, it now gives me the too shallow or too deep error message. The obnoxious thing is that the 90 kilohertz frequency is the wide beam. So that would give me more opportunity to pick up fish than the narrow beam. You know, the narrow beam, if it just sits level like this, as it would on a boat, isn't going to do you much good. So what you got to do is you got to tweak it a little bit as the rain comes in here, and that's going to cause it to wobble. And as it wobbles, that search pattern of the narrow beam is going to spread around and mimic the wide beam. And that's a way you can get around the uh, limitation that the wide beam doesn't really work in shallow water. Changing the sensitivity setting does nothing to impact the fact that one beam works better in shallow water than the other. If you do that, it, it's basically just going to pick up more stuff in the water, uh, be more sensitive to underwater structure, fish, and things like that than anything else. But you're also going to pick up more garbage. So I recommend you just leave it on the, the default setting of right in the middle. Therefore, my recommended settings when you're inshore in shallow water is use the narrow beam, turn on fish alerts, you want to be able to get that audible signal, as well as the fish icons. And be sure you're in the daytime mode. And you have to be in detail to see the daytime mode. If you've got the deeper hooked up in boat mode, again, the audible alert as you paddle is going to key you to a fish. Now, inshore, the use of boat mode is to find where the deeper holes are and where the channels are. First you go to Google Earth, you see where the real dark spots are on the satellite picture. That's where the channel is likely to be. And then when you're out with your deeper, you can paddle across and see the drop off on narrow beam because that's going to work best in shallow water. The final tip on using the deeper is don't put your smartphone on the floor of your kayak or on your seat. Try and have it elevated up with a line of sight between the smartphone and the deeper. The real advantage of this deeper for us inshore kayakers is we can throw it out and have it float down a deeper channel uh, with the tide or with the, the wind current. The other thing is that we can throw it up, we can anchor by a dock and then drift the deeper through the different pilings of the dock looking for fish. And that's something that my Humminbird Helix 7 won't do because once I'm docked, it's kind of useless, especially in shallow water. The side imaging isn't going to do me any good. So here's where the deeper doesn't do me any good. It doesn't record how deep it is when it gets to be too shallow. All it does is report that it's too shallow. But when, it, when that happens, I've got my paddle, and I can just dip my paddle in and get a sense of the depth. Well, let's head back into the marsh and see if we can use this deeper to find some fish. Okay, we're moving up. We talked to a crabber, and he said that the redfish were back here uh, next to the uh, beach. There's a thin sliver of land that divides this island in the marsh from the ocean. And apparently that's where, where they are. So I'm using the deeper to help me navigate and stay in the channel. It's showing about 3.2 feet right here, which is good. I tell you, that daytime view is absolutely critical. You can see that it's bright sun, it's shining on the face of my iPhone. But I can still see the deeper display. I've got to kind of look at it a little bit. Uh, to see the small number, but other than that, I can see the structure of the bottom below me fairly easily. 
So what I'm going to do is change it from boat mode that it's in right now and hook it up to a rod, throw it out there, and let the deeper move down through the channel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. It's really pretty easy. All I got to do is pull up this and unscrew the deeper. Now there's three holes here on the deeper. The top one is for boat mode and that's where I had it. This is for bridge mode and this bottom one is for casting. Since this thing weighs three ounces, I'm using a heavy action rod. Got an old whooping stick right here. And I think that'll be just fine to throw this out. Now I'm just gonna sit here for a bit. I've got the fish alarm on. So it can drift on down while I'm getting the rest of my gear rigged up and ready to go. One thing I notice when I'm retrieving the deeper in this wavy environment here, the waves are maybe, I don't know, four to six inches high, that it disconnects and I've got to get it next to the boat again to make it happy and restore the connection. Well, I drifted the deeper down this channel right here had a fish marker and now I've got a nice red on. Look at that guy. This is what a redfish looks like. I picked him up in the channel right where the deeper gave me a fish ID ping. Nice redfish. Circle hook right in the corner of the mouth. This is all right. I'm gonna let this guy go. So for inshore fishing the best use of that deeper is to do a long distance recon of a channel. Throw it out there, let it drift with the tide. When you get a fish ping, target it, throw a bait out there, or an oar or whatever you're using, and you're more likely to pick up a fish. Another nice fish, a 20 inch red, ran it next to the shoreline. I'm gonna let him go. One of the great advantages I've got fishing inshore is I can use the deeper in conjunction with the tide to check out whether there are fish between the pilings of the various docks and piers that we've got lining the ocean and in my case the intercoastal waterway. The tide's going out away from me, I'm anchored, and I'm going to float the deeper between these pilings and see if I can pick up some fish. I'm also going ahead and throw bait in some of the other places while I wait uh, and then I'll just work each of the pilings in turn and discover where the fish exactly are. And with heavy monofilament on, I don't need to worry about the deeper getting broken off uh, on the piers with the barnacles, because I'll be able to deal with that just fine with the heavy line. The trick is, to throw it a little bit farther away from the dock so then it can float under there without spooking the fish. And my fish alert just went off. Okay, I've talked a lot. Let's go ahead and summarize. First, the biggest negative to the deeper is the fact that the wide beam will not work in shallow water. You get that too shallow or too deep error message. My experience is that once you're underneath four feet, you need to switch to the narrow beam. The next con is the fact that the Wi-Fi connectivity requires direct line of sight between a deeper and your smartphone. And if you have significant waves going on, then the deeper is gonna lose connectivity and it'll go in and out. So on a really windy, wavy day, you're really not going to be able to use the deeper other than in boat mode. Another minor negative with the deeper is when you're in boat mode, you got to be careful to paddle smoothly so you're not rocking your kayak and pulling the deeper up and out of the water all the time because that'll cause it to turn off if it breaks contact with the water for too long. On the positive side, I love this thing for my inshore fishing because it does exactly what my Helix 7 with side imaging can. Once I'm anchored, as I am right now, that, that's a 10 pound you know, piece of gear that is useless to me. And the fact that it weighs 10 pounds 
is a big negative against my helix compared to the three ounces of the deeper. But with the deeper, when I'm anchored, I can throw it out. I, I've always got current going, except the high, you know, slack tide. And so I can always throw it out someplace and have it drift. And I just need to position my kayak to where I can take advantage of that. It allows me to, to throw it in a place where the fish aren't and then drift it stealthily into where the fish are and pick them up. Now, granted, with the narrow beam, you're not gonna see the fish unless it drifts right over it. And it's gotta be uh, at least two feet or greater depth uh, where you're gonna throw it. But at high tide, which is where I am right now, and that's where I have the most trouble finding fish, I've got plenty of depth to be able to use that feature. But the other great advantage for where I fish is to be able to go and sneak it between the pilings on docks and piers. That's just so fantastic to be able to anchor up and let it drift underneath there and pick up any fish that may be moving around next to the piling. I think that's going to be a, a great advantage to me, much more so than my helix, because again, once I'm stopped, that side imaging isn't doing me any good. It's a static picture. Now the boat mode, I feel, is great for finding channels. I don't fish in lakes, so I don't jig, so uh, I don't have the depth underneath my kayak to take advantage of the fact that, of the sonar image going straight down. But I love the fact that it'll give me a depth readout. The other thing when I'm floating it is the fish alert tone because I don't want to sit there and stare at my smartphone all the time. I'm busy fishing my other rods. The deeper's drifting along, going to wherever it's gonna go. And when that fish tone goes off, I'm gonna key on where the deeper is and then reel in and throw a bait or a lure over in that direction. So my bottom line is that I'm gonna start using the deeper instead of my helix because I can get more out of it based on where I fish. You know, one of the nice things about the Helix is I can record waypoints and things like that. But again, that's 10 and a half pounds of stuff. And I've got my Garmin GPS that I do the same thing with that weighs about a pound. So between this and the three ounce deeper, I replace 10 and a half pounds of gear that I don't have to push. Now, the other thing about that 10 and a half pounds of gear is that we all know that the word is when, not if, you're going to dump dump your boat. It's going to happen at some point. So do you want to try and turn over a boat with 10 pounds of, of helix hanging off it or three ounces of deeper? Much easier to recover the boat with the lighter load. So I'm giving the deeper a total thumbs up. I understand the limitations and I also understand how to work around them. What's your experience with this deeper? If you've got an opinion on it, throw it in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. And that's it for the deeper right now, because it just picked up a fish down here. I threw my bait down there, and a holy mackerel. I got a great red on right now. I gotta go catch it. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Still working that fish. Look at that. This, this is a beauty. This is definitely a red fish. Deeper pick this up, drifting down that shoreline. This is why I like that for inshore fishing. Two thumbs up.